example, here's what I want you to remember tonight. There are two Americas, but it's not divided up like John Edwards did, rich versus poor, black versus white. It's not left versus right. It's not believers versus atheists. No, the two Americas are one, the common sense America. Somebody living in, you know, common sense America would say crazy things like, hey, we're running up record deficits. We have $16 trillion in national debt. Maybe we should spend less than we have? Or something crazy racist like, um, here's an idea. How about we stop pursuing the policies the Europeans have used that they've tried already, and it's ending up in riots and burning cars and death and destructions and neo-Nazis winning elections? Okay, there's that America. And then there's the other America, the one that is um, dumb as a box of rocks. Someone in the dumb as a box of rocks America might say something like, you know, the DMV is just so darn efficient and the post office is so profitable that we should put the government in charge of America's health care industry. Or, I think the best way to create jobs is through government welfare checks. And the best solution to our debt problem is more debt. Or, or here, how about this one? Oh, this is out of control. Can we get the UN on the phone? They'll solve it. Okay, so those are your two choices. There's this America and the America that we all know and love. Now, this guy, Jim Robert, R Rogers. He's a leading economic figure, resident of Common Sense America, although technically he has moved to Singapore because he doesn't think Common Sense America exists anymore. I still do. He recently said on CNBC that uh, financial Armageddon is coming. What needs to be happening is people need to spend, stop spending money they don't have. I mean, this is not going to be solved until people start uh, cutting spending, cutting spending dramatically, and paying down debt. Okay. Oreo, the solution to too much debt is not more debt. We're going to have financial Armageddon anyway. Everybody's debts are going higher and higher. There's going to come a time when the, the rest of the world is not going to give these people any more money. By the way, did you see that France is now paying people to take their money? I mean, they're, they're, they're paying negative interest rates now for their bonds. Anyway, today, Noriel Rubini has come out and said, my perfect, theory, my perfect storm theory is unfolding right now. Noriel Rubini's perfect storm? That's weird, because I've been mocked about the perfect storm theory that has been brewing for the better part of a decade now, but I'm glad Noriel Rubini is on board with this. Bottom line is this. Our day of financial reckoning is coming, whether we like it or not. It's a matter of when, not if. Can I tell you something? I'm, um, I'm buying a house mainly because of that stupid thing that I wrote, you know, last uh, Thanksgiving and I shared with you all the things. And it was like, hey, and buy a house. I'm like, buy a house? What are you, crazy? And it is keeping me up at night. We're going to do a show hopefully later this week with some experts. Because not only are we buying a house, we're also doing business. And I don't know how to do business and buy a house when I believe what I believe is coming. So we're going to bring some financial experts in here and and help because it is a matter of when and this this is the real question what are you doing to prepare for it when we aired independence usa on gbtv it's a show about preppers um, about the same time the media critics mocked these people and anyone like preppers as crazy but the progressive global elitists around the world can't think that prepping is crazy because they're doing it. The global financial uh, landscape was drastically and completely changed through George Soros in Bretton Woods 3 in April 2011. How we interact with doctors and receive our health care, that, that was changed. It was flipped on its head. Even how we deliver foreign aid has been radically transformed and is different. Did you even know that? In the past, we have always been proud to let the world know exactly who was providing assistance 
and conventional wisdom would suggest Americans were also proud to have donated more relief to the victims of the Haiti earthquake than anyone else by a large margin. We gave $219 million in relief funds to Haiti. The entire continent of Europe gave $160 million. Okay, really? Now, everybody who gave, when they went down to Haiti, they proudly flew their flags, except for one country. Well, w that one country flew it for a while, and then that one country's president clearly came out and said, hey, we shouldn't do that anymore. Really? I didn't know this until a couple of weeks ago, and I'm surprised we missed it. Did you know the Obama, uh, Obama administration had us take down our flag as we were administering aid in Haiti? Because he said flying the American flag could give Haiti the wrong idea. Quote, we are not here as an occupation force, but as an international partner committed to supporting the government of Haiti on the road to reco recovery. An occupying, who thinks that the United States of America is an occupier? Most people in the world do not view America as an occupying force. Did you even know about that story? That we were so ashamed that we took the American flag down in Haiti. Everybody else flew theirs, not us. America, your friends need to make a choice. Which one is it? Which group are you with? Are you with those who believe America is a source for good or... America is a source of evil because these are your two choices. The one you understand is the past and it's made some mistakes. It's ratty. It's kind of frayed around the edges, but it works and it's good. Or are you with those who think the world can do, do much, much better because America is evil? If you believe America is the cause of all the world's ills, well... If you really believe that, wouldn't you be required to change the world? Wouldn't you be required spiritually as, as, a, as, a, as a decent human being? Wouldn't you have to fight for a new world order? New world order or return to a financial constitutional order. Which one is it going to be? Our Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, recently issued a stern warning to the Syrian president that says, the sand is running out of the hourglass for Syria. Now, first of all, what credibility do we as the United States have? Last June, this administration promised Egyptians that life would be better for them if they got rid of Mubarak, and nobody worried about what was coming next. Have you heard anybody ask what's coming next in Syria? No, it's just get this guy out. Well, they just elected a new president in Egypt. Also happens to be a loyal ranking official in the radical Muslim Brotherhood. Here's what he said, as we told you this last May. Al-Quran <laughs> ولا خير لهذه الأمة لا خير فيها ولا خير لها ولا نهضة إلا بالشريعة الإسلامية أعاهد الله أعاهد الله وأعاهدكم جميعا بغض النظر عن المكتوب أو النص وإن كان النص a lot of hacking there. By the way, this guy's also a 9-11 truther who on CNN said the Muslim Brotherhood would stand against the perpetrators of 9-11. Quote, 
if you could prove who really did this. Ow. Oh. In 2007, he called for a scientific conference on the attacks because the U.S. has, quote, never presented any evidence on the identity of those who committed that incident. Well, despite these extreme beliefs, President Obama has invited this radical Islamist 9-11 truther to the White House for talks. The new Egyptian president was a leading figure in a group that calls for the support of the end of Israel and the reestablishment of a global caliphate. Now, does that somebody who needs a lecture on Thomas Jefferson and freedom and liberty? This president calls the Tea Party extremist and won't meet with these people because they have different ideas about taxation. But a 9-11 truther calling for Sharia law, the end of Israel, is somebody that needs to be in the Oval Office. He'll meet with this guy, but not these guys. These are extremists, but this is not. I'll tell you, the only thing that's consistent here is the president has never had a hard time, you know, hanging with 9-11 truthers or bringing them into the White House. He's never had a hard time chatting with radicals, tyrants, and dictators. He said that he would meet with Ahmadinejad, and despite describing him as a leader that we don't really like, Obama failed to condemn Iran when they violently suppressed protest uh, and voters uh, about two years ago. Remember the Green Movement? He won't call Ahmadinejad an extremist, but Paul Ryan, on the other hand, is an extremist. 